Let's take a look at the uh, castle structure that the, uh, that's going to go on the top shelf. This is one of the sides. And uh, so you have the two windows in here. Um, you are never going to need to make one this big, but because of the size of my daughter's cat, I wanted to give the cat plenty of room in there. So uh, I'll give you the dimensions here, but these are probably way too big for your purposes. Uh, this is 32 inches one end to the other, and the height is 16 and a half. And uh, as far as the details are concerned, each of these little crenellations up here, they're five inches wide. The, uh, the little parts that are sticking up are an inch and a half wide and an inch and a half high. And the center portion of this is uh, it's four inches down from the, uh, from the top. And the two windows are four inches wide and five inches high. And the ends are uh, similar on the, as far as the crenellations are concerned. This is 18 inches wide. And the door, which is only will be on the one end, is uh, 10 inches high and uh, 7 inches wide. So uh, let's go to the bench, and I will show you how I laid out the door and the, the windows. First of all, just to uh, avoid having to uh, measure each one of these, I made a little template to uh, put the little tower thingies on there. And uh, as I mentioned previously, that's the dimensions on it. And when I went to market, I just laid it on the corner like that. And that gave me the dimensions, and it gave me this line across here uh, where to put that. So uh, I just made it once, and it was just easier than pulling the tape measure out over and over and over again. And what I did was I just took the center line of the end, and I kind of judged it by eye how big I thought it should be, split the difference so that it's centered, and then I made a mark at the top at 10 inches. Now, what I did was I arbitrarily picked a point uh, a certain distance from the bottom here and drew the arch up and I wanted to get something of a pointed arch sort of a gothic arch look to it so it looked more castle-y. Um, I did these basically by eye um, and if you're comfortable doing that that's fine. If you're not and uh, this is actually the uh, template for one of the windows. What I did was I cut a piece out the size of the window, the width and the height. I made a mark down the center and I made a mark uh, across where I want the arch to start. So what you can do is just fold this carefully on the line like that and then you know take it and just uh, or you can't see that too well, but take it and just cut what you think you'd like it to look like, unfold it, and see if that works okay. Um, and obviously paper's cheap and wood is not, so you can do this as many times as you need to uh, until you get it the way you want it. Actually, this one is, uh, the arch is a little too fat there. I'm going to cut that back a little bit. I want it to be more pointy and less rounded. So you may have to do this a few times to get it the way you want to. That's a little better. Uh, let me show you how I laid out the um, windows. We want to split this into three equal parts to evenly space the windows out. It's not super critical, but uh, just to make it look uh, symmetrical. We've got 33 and 3 quarters here. Which happens if you divide it by three to end up being approximately 11 and one quarter. So that worked out nicely. If not, you'll have to work the numbers. So it will come in 11 and a quarter from each end. <coughs> and that'll be the center line. Square up from those two marks I made, the 11 inches. And oops. I decided to put the bottom of the windows four inches up from the bottom. So I just made a mark on there. 
I have the two marks from the uh, center lines of the windows. So all you have to do is take the pattern, put the bottom on that mark, line up the center line on the pattern with the center line that you drew on the board, and then just trace it. So that's how you lay that out. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a couple holes in here and then take the uh, these, um, saber saw and go through and cut these out. So I'll show you that. And I'm just putting a uh, piece of scrap under there so that I don't cut into the table. And as I said, I'll just put two holes at the bottom and that's enough to uh, let me get this, the uh, saber saw in there and take care of that. One castle side completed. Cut the door out same way. Um, we don't need the holes here because we have the bottom of the, uh, we're starting on the bottom rather than in the field. So we don't need those two holes there. So we'll just go ahead and cut this. I will take a file and some sandpaper and get all these little uh, splinters off of here, make it uh, a little bit nicer to the touch. And then uh, we'll go ahead and nail this together, but I won't show that on camera. You don't need to see me filing. It's kind of boring. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Uh, by the way, this is really not the best way to cut this. I'm kind of holding it in midair and just leaning it on the bench. Uh, what I should be doing is cutting it um, <clears throat> on some supports near the floor or putting it a couple, all across a couple of sore horses, but um, I couldn't get the shot to work out uh, doing it that way. So this is not the best way to do this. Um, if you built the crickets that we had uh, shown you in one of our previous videos, uh, use those, you know, get down on the floor and do it. or uh, these, uh, especially the, these are long enough that they would span two saw horses that were close together. So you could use that to hold it up to, instead of doing what I'm doing here. But we're going to go ahead and assemble the castle structure here. I'm going to use uh, four penny finished nails and some glue uh, to do so. I uh, this is a little tricky to hold on to and uh, and nail it. So a couple things you can do is you can. a clamp across it to hold it together while you do the nailing or if you don't have a big enough clamp what I did here is I just shoved it uh, up against the wall so that as I nail uh, it'll stay steady and I just pre-drilled some holes down here for the nails just to make it a little bit easier if you do not have a drill bit small enough to match the nail what you can do is cut the head of the nail off and then just chuck that in the drill. It doesn't make a particularly good drill, but it will drill a whole appropriate size for you. So I went ahead and did that. And what I'm going to do now is just put a little glue on the edge here. If I get the glue open, it's been closed for a while. helps to grab the hammer before you start 
and I'll just line this up and drive these through. I did not mention I used half inch plywood for this so um, I've come in a quarter inch from the edge with the pre-drilled holes so that should land the nail right in the middle of the uh, other pieces we go through there. A couple of things to keep in mind. When you drill this, you want to make sure that the drill is perpendicular to the face of the uh, plywood because if you put it sideways at all, when you drive the nail in, you're going to blow out the side of the uh, of the piece you're nailing into and we don't want that so um, make sure that you get that uh, perpendicular to the uh, square to the the piece you're drilling through uh, um, what else was I going to say the um, the reason I'm not using screws on this is because the heads are real big and uh, they're going to be real near the edge of the edge of the uh, pieces and uh, you would have to be you have to do quite a bit of uh, puttying to fill those up. I'm going to attach the castle to the platform it sits on, and I want to uh, get it centered from side, end to end and side to side. There's, I left a little lip on the edges; it doesn't come all the way out to the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what you could do is you could jockey it around until by eye and try to get it right and then measure the differences and get it perfectly um, but that can get a little tedious so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this should be 19 which it is and this should be 33 and 3 quarters which it is so Nineteen wide, and the platform is about twenty. So what I need is should have about half an inch in from this side. I'll mark that. And I can find my straight edge, which was just here. What did I do with it? Oh, boogers. Ah, there it is. Take your straight edge and connect those two points. And that'll give us the uh, one line to go to. And since that's the entrance down there, I think I'm going to... I'm going to bring this far end all the way to the end of the platform so that um, there's a little room to step out here and I may have to build a uh, I may have to build a bridge from here the front of this down to the next the, the lower uh, platform so the cat has something to scoot up um, may not need that but I might so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put I'm going, to have the, I'm going to come in half inch in the back here also just to have a little lip and leave the rest of the overhang on the door end of it so that if I need to attach a, uh, um, a ramp coming up to this I'll have some place to put it on. So let me do that. I'll do the same thing we did on the when we put together the castle itself. We'll drill pilot holes and we'll glue it and drive nails through it. And what I'll do is, um, once I drill the holes, I'll actually flip this over and flip the castle over so that I can drive the nails in without trying to do it from underneath. So that's done. We'll have to. There's some spots I want to put some wood filler on. It chipped out a little bit here and there. Um, 
but pretty much done. As I said, I'm not positive yet I'm going to put a roof on it, so I'll have to think about that a little bit. So uh, I got to sand the have to sand the uh, branches off, and um, while I'm doing that, I'll take this and uh, sand this and, and do the uh, wood filler while I'm at it. So that'll be the next step. But we are making good progress. I primed and painted this off camera. The um, gray color on there is a mixture of three parts black to uh, one part white. And then I went around and I dabbed on a lighter gray color that's uh, one part black to three parts white to try to make it look um, a little less uniform since uh, if, if it was actually made out of stone like a castle would be, it wouldn't look like that. And then after that, uh, what I did was I took black paint undiluted and uh, straight black and a small brush and I went over the whole thing painting in um, what, would, what, what would look like um, lines where the uh, blocks of stone would be and I went around the outside of it also so that the it would uh, make the uh, edges stand out a little better so you can see what I'm doing here I'm just kind of trying to make this a little bit random and not look like bricks uh, you can do it any way you want but I thought that was the best effect and uh, that made it look a little more castly to put the carpet on I bought some uh, velcro with adhesive on both sides of it. I just cut some pieces and stuck it to the back of the carpet and then I pushed the uh, carpet down onto the platform so that uh, the uh, velcro would be stuck to the platform itself. Um, ran into a slight problem with this. The adhesive on the didn't stick to the carpet very well so I ended up putting a little bit of hot glue on the adhesive uh, part that stuck to the carpet but it worked out okay in the end. I drove some three inch screws to the bottom of the major branches that are sticking up. Uh, the top was a little wobbly when you push on it, it was moving quite a bit. And uh, the screws helped, but I'm not sure it's still stiff enough for the cat. The cat may not like it if it's wobbly. So what I did was I cut some uh, smaller pieces of branch and uh, I haven't screwed these in yet, but um, I'll take it, you know, I'll. I will put them in if I need to, and that should uh, stiffen those uh, branches up pretty good so that the top is uh, more steady. So that is the finished product. Uh, I think it came out pretty good. It looks pretty cool, and uh, I think the cat will like it, hopefully, after all that work. So that's kind of the wrap-up of the uh, actual construction of this thing. I'm going to do one more video and go over how long it took, how much it costs, and uh, some things I learned along the way which will make it easier for you if you do attempt this project. So uh, that'll be along soon. But for the time being, I, I really appreciate you sticking with me throughout this whole thing. It took quite a while to get this done. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. So in the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.